Welcome to the latest installment of the Solidarity Across Borders campaign, brought to you by the Jesuit Migration Network of Central and North America and the Campaign for Hospitality. My name is Caitlin Marie Ward, and I am the Senior Advisor on Migration at the Jesuit Conference Office of Justice and Ecology. During this third and final phase of the campaign, we will examine the crucial role education plays in laying the foundation for a life of dignity, both in migrants' home countries and in host communities. Education within the Jesuit network is guided by the concept of cura personalis, which translates to care for the whole person. Consequently, whether provided in a refugee camp in Africa, a poor barrio in Central America, or a bustling metropolis in the United States, a Jesuit education attends to the physical, mental, and emotional well-being of its students. Through this holistic approach, education becomes an agent of social change, sowing seeds of hope long into the future. When it comes to the education of Malawi, uh, of refugees in Malawi, they help you transit, they help you join the education system, they help you learn the language, they help you join a uh, university or higher education, they help you join for the kids who are just starting school, they help you join preschool, so that when it comes to education, Jerry does a lot and they don't do it only for refugees, also for the Malawi and in the surrounding uh, villages or they come to study at the school because the school has got a good reputation, they always get good grades when it comes to the national test. Uh, so like Pierre does a lot when it's come to education in Malawi. Jesuit Refugee Service, or JRS, was founded in November 1980 by Father Pedro Arrupe, the then Superior General of the Society of Jesus, to respond to the plight of Vietnamese refugees fleeing their war-torn country. Forty years later, JRS has a presence in 56 countries. Education has always been a major component of the services offered through JRS, and in 2015 it launched the Global Education Initiative to expand and strengthen its programs. By 2019, it had surpassed its goal of reaching 250,000 refugees each year. All right, uh, the way I discovered JRS was my desire to learn a new language, to learn new things. I'm always that guy who want to learn something new and add my knowledge. And I was coming from a French country uh, as an adolescent who was trying to know different things. I, I find some friends who were speaking good English. I was like, hey guys, where do you guys learn how to speak English? Uh, they explained me this GRS, you never gone around the camp. I was like, I, we knew here, I don't know anybody. I just see you guys talking. Can you explain me? They told me, if you go to GRS, and you register yourself in ESL, English Second Language. They're gonna take you and you're gonna learn uh, how to speak English the same way we are. We came here, we are not speaking English and we also learn by right here. So that's how I went to GRS. I the 10 years I had, I passed in camp, I passed 10 years in the hand of GRS. First as a student of GRS, second as a worker of GRS. So I pursued my uh, high school education through GRS and then I joined high school, a program which is an online uh, university class that we used to take from Regis University through GRS and GWL. Basically, it's, it's, we call it a diploma, which is uh, similarly to uh, an associate. And uh, so apart from being the work of GRS, myself and my three other friends, we, we did our own survey in the camp and came up with this idea of uh, starting our own uh, NGO that can be helping in showcasing the talents because we uh, after our survey we realized that the streets of Africa were having a lot of potentials which were needed to be unlocked they needed to be portrayed so we started an NGO called Salama Africa we were taking the youth from the street of Zaleka who failed to attend school because as I told you not everybody can go to school and treat them different creative skills like uh, you know like DIYs like art making like dance like music 
all the different kind of parts so that they can re- at least find a, uh, something to do because uh, a lot of people don't understand that living in a place whereby you don't have something to do you don't have somewhere to go you need to find at least something to do to avoid different problems like uh, early marriage early pregnancy HIV, AIDS, like drug, alcohol. So we were doing that. And from uh, the work we have done, almost 2,000 youth have benefited uh, from our activities, maybe through watching, through participating, through uh, being part of the, the, uh, the performance. I started this process in 2014 so from 2014 uh we're supposed to travel by the end of 2016 in the u.s and things didn't go well and then 2017 was one of my hardest time in a refugee camp whereby there was travel ban day and night we could wake up so we could have travel uh the beginning of february and then on 29 january i cannot forget 2017 there was a travel ban We are ready, excited, saying, wow, we are now finally leaving this place and walking around the offices. We found outside the office of UNHCR is a big paper saying that uh, this is travel ban, all the refugee processes go to America. It was a shock, it was a blow uh, for all of us and my family. Uh, and then we were like, oh, so they said it's 90 days, it's going to end. 90 days end, another ban, 90 other days end, another ban. It keeps repeating and repeating. Then we go to 2018. At the beginning, there was still so many pressure and so many people who really understand the struggles of refugees. They understand the goodness of bringing people who uh, really still have that, you know, they still need to work for this country. They still want to develop this country. So they were putting more pressure. And then later on, by the end of uh, 2018, uh, we started seeing the few lights so at the end of the tunnel, then again, it didn't go well until when we get in mid uh, 2019. That's when we get the chance to travel. At the end of last year, there were 20.4 million refugees of concern to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Fewer than 1% are resettled from the asylum country to a third country. In 2019, the UNHCR submitted files for 19,000 refugees from the Democratic Republic of Congo for consideration by resettlement countries. Around 13,000 refugees from the DRC were resettled to the United States in fiscal year 2019. Since President Trump took office, the U.S. has taken a hard tumble from its previous position as the world leader in refugee admissions. The refugee cap was set at 18,000 for fiscal year 2020 the lowest number of refugees resettled by the U.S. in a single year since Congress created the nation's refugee resettlement program in 1980. Lack of political will, as well as challenges posed by COVID-19, likely means the U.S. will fail to meet this low bar by the end of this fiscal year. I think about that every every day, because I know what I saw in that life. I know what I've been going through, and I still have my sister and my brother in Malawi. They're still struggling. They always fall. Like, during COVID, they're like, uh, we're going to finish here. You know, there's no there's no good health system. There's not. And this disease has just find us here. It's it's so sad when you hear about that. I have friends. I've built a community in Baleka. Uh, I have people that I already uh, feel so sad to see them in that same kind of life. So uh, it's really sad to me. It's so painful, and if they, I was having uh, a way of advocating for that platform, I would use that way to advocate for that in a positive way so that the voice of maybe those people who are the speechless can be heard and, and they can maybe raise the number of the people who are coming to the U.S. So the one I took was social work, but uh, and then when I, I I I was feeling like social work is limiting me, I was like I need to do more. I don't just want to work with individuals. I want to work with the world. 
So when I get here, I change my major to social sciences and I'm majoring in, in, in global studies. So now I'm gonna get my bachelor, maybe work and then go for masters, then join the field. You know, refugees are just people, just people of everybody and they have talents. They have ideas, they have things that can change this world. And if they just get the chances, they can do a lot. Many thanks to Jesuit Refugee Service for putting us in touch with Alon. If you are looking for ways to promote access to education for refugees, asylum seekers, and other immigrants, consider donating to one of the Jesuit works serving migrants in the U.S. and Canada. You can find a list of ministries at www.jesuits.org slash donate 2020. We also encourage you to respond to the call to action for this month by sending a postcard or an electronic message to the Department of Homeland Security with recommendations for an immigration policy that respects the human dignity of our migrant brothers and sisters. You can order the postcards or send the message directly from the Solidarity Across Borders website at www.jesuits.org migration. Thank you for watching.